Hello everyone. Welcome to this video series on Web Technologies Lab. So before proceeding further, like and share this video and also subscribe to my YouTube channel for notifications on latest videos. Right? Okay. So before looking at the programs in the syllabus, uh, I am going to explain something called general web application architecture. So the main goal of this course is uh, it allows the users to create web applications. So you are going to learn all the technologies and languages that will assist you for creating web, web, web applications. Okay. So to understand about web applications, you have to know what is the architecture of a general web application. Okay. Right. So first, there is a user. Uh, you can assume this is yourself. Okay. Now the user is interacting with the front end, that is the browser, by sending a request. Okay. So the request can be simply opening the browser and typing www.google.com. Okay. Or www.youtube.com. That is a request. Okay, so you are requesting a page which belongs to a particular domain, either google.com or yahoo.com or any other website. Okay, so let's not consider Google or YouTube, let's consider the example of your university exams website. So, as a student of an university, uh, you can check your exam results by visiting your university website. So you are sending a request to your university website. Okay. So here the front end is the browser. Okay. So usually how do you define front end is uh, it is the part of the web application with which the user interacts. Okay. So the user is going to interact with the front end, which is generally the browser. Okay. And front end of a web application is the web page that you are going to see here okay so you are going to interact with these web pages right okay now this browser will take the request from the user and it will forward through internet so the internet will contain so many devices so we are not going to bother about them let's say it is going through the internet and it reaches the server okay so your university will maintain a server, right? Somewhere. So the server is typically called the backend. Okay. So the server is going to take the request, right? And the server is going to process the request. So I told you that you are accessing the university examination portal, right? So the university is going to store all the results in a database or maybe in files. Okay, so let's not uh, worry about this. So the data is stored in database or files. So the server is going to retrieve the data from the database or maybe files and it is going to send back the response. Okay, okay. so the, re the response can be in any format. Let's not uh, worry about the format of response. Okay. Now the response will go through the internet and it will reach the browser. The browser is going to show the response to user. Okay, so this is the general web application architecture. Right. So sometimes people will talk about tiers. Okay, like two tier architecture, three tier architecture, four tier architecture, so on. So the thing you are seeing here, it is a two tier architecture. So this is tier one and this is tier two. Okay. So the client system is tier one and the server system is tier two. This is two tier architecture. I hope you understood about this uh, web application architecture. So let's proceed. Okay. So what are the different technologies or languages that are going to be covered in this video series that is web technologies lab. So first you are going to learn about HTML. 
okay, which is abbreviated as hypertext markup language. And then you are going to learn about CSS, which abbreviates to cascading style sheets. So the use of CSS uh, is to uh, gen generally styling the web pages. Okay, styling means uh, presentation elements like adding colors, okay, changing the font size, font color, or font type, uh, maybe borders, maybe you want to show shadow, text shadow, or box shadow, or whatever. So, generally, CSS is for styling the web pages, that's all. And then you are going to learn about JavaScript, okay? So, I would like to mention java and javascript are not same both are different some people think that java and javascript are same no so what is the use of javascript is so javascript can be used for let's say uh, for generating dynamic html so what is meant by dynamic html means let's say when the user clicks uh, submit button in a form something should happen okay or when the user clicks a button the image should disappear or the image should appear again that is called as dynamic html uh, javascript can also be used for validation okay data validation so data validation means for example uh, in a form there is a mobile number field right so all of you know that mobile number contains 10 digits right so if the user is not giving 10 digits maybe giving 9 digits or 11 digits uh, the form should show an error that mobile number is not in the format correct format right so that thing is called as validation such things can be done using javascript and next we are going to learn about php which abbreviates to php hypertext tree processor okay so this php this is uh, server side technology okay in the next in the coming slides i will show you what is meant by server side back end front end etc i will show you don't worry so php is used on the server side so php can also be used for data validation just like javascript okay uh, both can both can be used for validation and you can use php also for retrieving data from databases or files and you can do a lot of other things also so that is, that is the use of php and next you are going to see something called xml which abbreviates to extensible markup language so this is a data representation format that's all okay xml is a data representation format right so i think all of you know that uh, in a database data is represented in the form of tables right similarly in XML also, we store data, but in different format using tags. We will see. Don't worry. Okay. And you are going to store data using XML, and we are going to use technologies like DOM and SAX, which are parsers for retrieving data from XML files. So the use of DOM and SAX is they are used to retrieve data from XML files using languages like Java, PHP, etc. Right. And then, similarly as PHP, there are other technologies which are related to Java, like servlets and JSP. Okay, so both of these things, servlets and JSPs, these are Java technologies. Okay, so these are the various technologies or languages that you are going to learn. Uh, in this lab curriculum so before proceeding further i would like to say that uh, in these videos or in this series video series i am not going to touch servlets and jsp so whatever you can do using servlets and jsp they can also be done using php okay so we are going to see html css javascript PHP, XML, that's all. We are not going to touch servlets and JSP. So actually, these are a lot of things that are included in the syllabus. So I would like to skip 
last two circlets and gs okay so this is our general web application architecture right so you have two things here front end with which the user interacts and we have another thing called back end which is the server which contains database and files and also other kind of logic now let's see where all the technologies and languages will fall so first front end technologies html css javascript so these three are the main technologies which are used to create websites or web pages okay the front end part of a web web application or website is going to be created using html css javascript okay and then you have back end uh are the server related technologies where we can use php servlets js okay and then we have xml which is a data representation technology okay now the syllabus so the first program is they are asking to create static web pages which is four pages so they are asking us to create home page login page registration page and catalog page which belongs to an application or website called as online bookstore okay and the second one is they are asking us to use javascript where they are asking us to validate the data we are going to enter in the registration page okay so you can pass here and see what they are asking us to validate like you can see uh, the last name and address fields should not be empty okay so if they are left empty we should show an error message that is the second program and the third program is to use css so in css we have three levels inline internal and external so we are going to see how to use them for styling the web page and in program 4 they are again asking us to use javascript and use something called alert boxes which are pop up boxes and they are asking us to do four things so you can pause and see what they are asking us to do All right okay and then fifth program is they are asking us to use html and also css so they are asking us to use a selection box which displays five country names whenever the user selects Uh, country for example india right its capital should be displayed okay and on this capital they are asking us to use color bold and font size using css right so that is program 5 and program 6 mm, they are asking us to use javascript where displays a text field and the user can enter any number between 0 to 999 and once the user clicks submit button it should display each number in the form of word for example the number is 67 it should display 67 okay and also they are asking us to validate the uh, number okay you can see the text field should not accept four and above digits for example i should not give something like this which contains four digits okay or even this number so the number should be less than 1000 okay and the number should not contain any alphabets or any other special characters so we have to use javascript for that and program 7 here comes php so they are asking us to use php for taking a number and displaying the sum of individual digits in the number and second program they are asking us to find whether the given number is palindrome or not and program 8 we are going to use xml i told you xml is used as a data representation format to store data so they are asking us to store information of 10 users and we have to use java language and use either dom parser or text parser to retrieve data from 
XML file and display on the screen. That is program eight. And program nine, which contains four sub programs. So this is the first sub program. Okay. So here you have to uh, display a text field which takes the name of the person as input and do something. Okay. So pause and read what we have to do. And second sub program is to use PHP to display current date and time and also date. And third sub program in ninth program is um, it the page asks for name and also age of the person and if the age is greater than 18 you have to display some message otherwise you have to display another message so pause and read the program what, what you should do and fourth sub program is we will be using php and using a concept called cookies okay so don't worry i will talk when i do the video about this program what are cookies and what are the what is the use of that right now program 10 here we will be using php and a database maybe oracle or mysql and retrieve the data from the database and display on the web page so that is this program and 11th program is instead of database we will use xml that is the only difference between program 10 and 11 okay and last program is to create a simple calculator using javascript right so these are all the 12 programs in the lab curriculum and finally the software requirements the the software that you are going to use in this lab one is notepad plus plus which is a basic text editor and another thing is the software is easy php dev server which is version 17 so this contains php and also you can write html css and javascript as well so these are the only software that are required to do our lab of course you have to you you have to uh, download or use dbms software also because one program has database so we will use either oracle or mysql maybe mysql because mysql is free right so these are the three software that are required okay now let's see um, how to download easy php dev server so go to google and type easy php dev server okay and the first link that is the link from easyphp.org you can click that so here is the thing so if you are windows i mean if the os is uh, windows 7 8 10 or 11 you can download this one okay or your operating system is windows xp okay you can download this one right so most of the time it is usually this one because many of the people are using windows 10 or windows 11 so if you yours is a old system which is using xp you can download this okay right so just click this button it will show you it will take you to another web page like this and click on this link and the download will start so I just clicked it. Mm. Oh, yes, the download has started here. Okay, so I am stopping it as I have already downloaded the software. So that's it about the introduction to Web Technologies Lab. So if you have any doubts, you can always comment below the video. Thank you.